Ferrari purists, cover your ears. I'm gonna say it, okay? The Ferrari 308 GTBI is a little bit of a pig. It's a little heavy. We weighed this thing all the way back in episode two of this build, and ever since, I've been trying to save weight where I can. Ignoring all of the other reasons to swap a Honda engine into a Ferrari, such as the power ceiling, the reliability, the cost, the R&D, and the size of the aftermarket, we have weight. So today, we are going to weigh my car and see how much progress we've made. We're gonna nerd out on some of the details, we're gonna figure out what weight still has to go back in it, see where we can still shave a few pounds, and ultimately get the best idea we can of where this thing's gonna land when it's finished. And with any luck, maybe we'll save 500 pounds, six, 700 pounds over that factory weight. Maybe even more if we're lucky. Let's find out. To begin, we're gonna rewind all the way back to the first few episodes of this series. I think that having a baseline for what we're working with is rather important. I started with what was admittedly a really nice 308 GTBI, and it came equipped with a 2.9 liter V8 that pumped out 202 horsepower at the crank or 163 horsepower at the wheels. If you've been watching along with the series, you know that we've stripped this car more or less down to its bare shell. Before I took any of it apart though, I wanted to get a baseline weight. I knew I'd want to look back at a moment like this and know what we started with. So I borrowed a set of scales from my buddy Joey over at Emotion Engineering and got a baseline weight. It tipped the scales at what I felt was a staggering 3,200 pounds with its spare tire under the hood. And for a car that's only marginally larger than a Miata, that is way, way too heavy for this build. Now as the build has progressed, I have weighed it on two other occasions. Once when it was more or less completely stripped, and once after we dropped the engine into place. But now that the car's driveline is complete and it runs, and now that most of the running gear is also mounted, save for a few things like axles and coilovers, we've got most of what makes a car a car. So I wanna weigh it again. It's more or less full of fluids, it has a half tank of gas, and it's only missing a few major components that will add considerable weight, such as the wheel and tire package and the aero package. I'm convinced that if we can come in around 22 or 2300 pounds in its current state, we can have a car that is 500 pounds lighter than it was originally. As a result, I decided to not borrow scales anymore. It's finally time to buy a set of my own. Now, because I'm not a professional, nor am I a race shop, I settled on some relatively inexpensive Proform scales. These will be more than good enough to give me all of the data that I need now and in the future as we go to corner balance and weigh this car properly. I also opted for the wired version as opposed to wireless. My experience with wireless scales in the past has been nothing short of problematic with connection issues and batteries to deal with versus the simplicity of this one. It's got a simple head unit that'll give us weights, cross weights, and percentages, and I'll make sure I keep you guys in the loop for how it holds up over the next several years and projects here on the channel. Now to weigh the Ferrari today, we are going to leave it on the dolly, which means we're also weighing the dolly along with the car. And the dolly weighs right around 60 pounds. It's also gonna prevent us from getting any useful weight bias or cross balance info. But for now, I'm really not worried about it. This is really just an exercise in satisfying my own curiosity. I wanna see how far we've strayed from my original goal of around 2,700 pounds for a finished car. All right, so I've already given my explanation of what weights we're working with, but uh, yeah, here goes nothing. The car is on the scales. It's time to see what it actually weighs. To reiterate, I'm hopeful to see 2260. 2260, that would be 60 pounds additional with the dolly that it's on. That would put us at 2200 pounds as it sits. That would give me 400 pounds of wiggle room to hit 2600 pounds, which is a weight I would be happy with, 2,500 pounds would get me pretty excited. And if we can come in as a finished weight under 25, I think that'd be pretty sick. So, all right, let's see what it weighs. Nineteen hundred and sixty-six pounds, baby. Dude, 1900, that's 1,900 pounds minus the dolly. That is super light. I am Super stoked with that. That is so much lighter than I was expecting. I am, hell yeah, hell yeah. We are gonna have a lightweight car when we are done. There's no way this thing is gonna be over 2,500 pounds finished. I mean, completely dressed, 
ready to run and hit the track. I think we might hit 2,400 pounds, maybe 23, I don't know. I think 23 is possible. I think we could have a 2,300 pound car when it's finished. That's 400 pounds up from where we're at now. The wheels and tires will be a heavy chunk of that, but there's not that much past that. Not that much past that. The arrow will weigh a bit, but it's all carbon. We'll throw the seat, the roll bar. Mmm. Mmm. All right, I gotta take a, I gotta take a moment. I am, I gotta get excited. <laughs> so while I collect myself off screen, let's talk about what these numbers actually mean because the total weight is 1965, but there is that one corner up at the top, the left front that reads 85 pounds. Are we missing 400 pounds due to a funky scale? Well, at first I thought that might be the case. Perhaps this thing really is that 22, 2300 pounds that I was expecting. But I decided to swap the scales in the front to see if the number would move. And because it did, I know for a fact that we do have four functional scales. So why is one corner so far off? Well, I realized that answer is humorous but simple. It's kind of like when you sit down at a restaurant and have a funky stool or a table that wobbles around. Because there's no actual suspension holding the car up and instead it's a rigid wooden frame, we've got this kind of deal going on on the scales. So thankfully, 1,900 pounds is completely accurate, but what's not accurate are the cross weights and the front and rear bias. For starters, the rear casters are well in front of where the rear wheels will be, and as said, there's no springs on the car to help distribute load. So I'll have to wait a few more weeks until we have useful information there. So the car as it sits weighs 1,900 pounds, but there's still a lot of other stuff that needs to go back on. For starters, there's the aero package. The splitter itself only weighs 11 pounds, and the rear wing is another 10. But we do have to add in the flat bottom floor and the rear diffuser, and that brings the cumulative weight of the aero package up to right about 50 pounds. And then of course there's the wheel and tire package, the heaviest mass yet to go back on the car. Each tire comes in right around 30 pounds, and the wheels are guaranteed to be at least 20 pounds a piece. There's quite a few electronics that we need to add, such as headlights, e-fans, and our dash. And then there's still a missing passenger seat, a roll bar, and seat belts that need to be installed as well. And last but not least, I want to make sure we have some wiggle room. I have to guess that there's at least 100 pounds of miscellaneous stuff that has to be installed that I have yet to mention. And all of those figures could be totally wrong, but if we run with them, that gives us a calculated weight of 2,365 pounds. Now, I don't want to get my hopes up, but if this thing lands anywhere in the 2300s, I will be truly ecstatic. But let's talk about a few places that we could still lose some weight. The biggest one is the doors. I've mentioned in a previous episode that I found a company that sells composite doors, and I'm kind of keen on buying a set. I think that the cumulative savings from that alone could be anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds. As far as my suspension goes, once I have everything sorted, I'd love to find somebody who can machine billet uprights in place of my steel ones. And on that same note, perhaps once I have all my geometry finalized, somebody could machine billet control arms in place of the DOM steel. There's also the opportunity in the future to go with a more weight-optimized wheel design to save some unsprung weight, and I could always go with carbon seats inside of the car. And that's just scratching the surface. So obviously there's quite a bit of weight we could pull out of the car that would be easy to accomplish. And then there's a lot of weight we could pull out of the car if we want to spend some real money and do something like composite doors. But that comes with drawbacks and I've got to make some decisions about how much of that juice is worth the squeeze and things like safety and what have you. But overall, I'm really happy with the current weight of the car. It's significantly less than I was expecting it to be, obviously by my reaction. Initially, I had a goal for this car of 2,500 pounds as my optimistic figure, and honestly, 26 would be fine. And even at 27, I figured that should probably be a realistic figure. That would be 500 pounds lighter than the original car. At 2,700 pounds, I wouldn't have been hugely disappointed. I think that would have been a good barrier, and we're so far beyond that. I was probably optimistic in saying that there's 400 pounds going back into the car. It could easily be 500 pounds. But even if it is, that would put us at 2,400 pounds on the nose. We lose one pound somewhere, and we're in the 23s. And in the 23s, that's within 100 pounds of my Model A. So honestly, 
I'm gonna make it a goal, if I can, it'll, I'll have to have some ebb and flow to it, but I'm gonna make it a goal to hit a thousand kilos. I think that would be pretty incredible. If we can hit a thousand kilos, that would be, I don't know, that's a pretty sick milestone. With a thousand horsepower, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. So let's see if we can squeeze it out. I'm not gonna kill myself trying to get there, but I do think that it's it's definitely possible. If we wanna go the route of composite doors and billet uprights, uh, if we start pulling a few things here and there out, if I were to put Lexan in it, even if it wasn't in the windshield, if we did Lexan for the doors in the, in the quarter glass, uh, I know that we'd lose some weight there. And I mean, for weight purposes, we don't have to run the arrow if we're gonna do you know, just a power to weight ratio, something to have fun with. We're not gonna be using arrow on the street. Can't really utilize it. So there's definitely a path to get there. I'm excited about it. Thousand kilos, we'll see if we can do it. I'm not gonna kill myself to get there, but I feel pretty good about it. I think that would be an awesome goal. Anyways, enough rambling. I do a lot of that. I know this episode was mostly rambling. Sorry to those of you that don't like it, but this one was for the nerdy dudes out there. I was really excited to see what this thing weighs and some of you guys were too. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna get to work on this thing, get some fab work done over the weekend. I will see you guys next week. Thanks as always for the support.